Hey Freebs Nation, Jordan Page with FunCheaperFree.com and today I'm taking you inside my fridge, my freezer, and my pantry to show you the kitchen staples that y'all should have on hand all the time. Ready for this? So many of you have asked the same question. What should I keep on hand? We are in September right now, which is shelf timber for those of you who don't know. It's essentially a month of eating out of our fridge, our freezer, and the things on the shelf in our pantry. It's all about retraining our habits to use what we have to make meals and then running to the store for a few things to supplement and not the other way around. It is the most affordable way to feed your family well and we've been focusing on it at funcheaperfree.com all month long. But it doesn't matter whether you're watching this video in September or July, this is a concept that can still work for you. But in order to shelf cook like we do in shelf timber and to make healthy meals for your family using what you have on hand, you gotta have some stuff on hand. So I am answering your resounding questions, your repeated questions of, what the heck do I keep in my kitchen to show you that it's possible to keep a handful of items on hand that you can use at the drop of a hat to make full meals for your family. Time for a disclaimer. I have had no preparation for this. I have not cleaned out my fridge. I have not cleaned out my freezers. My pantry is a disorganized mess. I honestly don't really know what I have in here, but I wanted this to be real and I wanted to show you what I try to keep on hand and how I would use them to make meals. So don't judge me because I'm sure they're a mess. I'm winging this right along with you. So if there are any things that I mention or think of after the fact that I didn't show, I will list an additional list of items to keep on hand on my blog and I'll link that below. So be sure to check out that blog post after this video in case there's anything I miss. Enough blabber, let's do this. Okay, let's start with the fridge. The fridge is the most important part of shelf cooking, which again, if you remember, shelf cooking is using what you have on hand first and creating meals and then running to the store for the few things you need to supplement not just running to the store and buying whatever you want and then letting it all go to waste. The fridge is the most important part of shelf cooking because it's the food that's gonna go bad first. It's usually what you need to use up the fastest. So let's start here. I'm gonna show you some of the things that I think you should always keep on hand in your fridge that will help you make meals for your family without having to run to the store. The most important part of your fridge in terms of shelf cooking is actually gonna be in the door. There are certain things that I feel like you should always have on hand that make meals a cinch. A few of those things are sauces, that salad dressings, barbecue sauce, steak sauce, sriracha, sriracha mayo, anything that you have that you can just add to a simple piece of protein or on a simple salad to jazz it up. You can also make sauces, of course, so there are a lot of easy ways to make dressings and sauces from scratch, but I do prefer to keep some on hand as well. Clearly, we have a thing for barbecue sauce because we've got 800 of them. So, anyone need some barbecue sauce? I like keeping refrigerated minced garlic on hand. It just really helps you turn something that's maybe store-bought or canned, and it adds flavor and flair without having to have fresh garlic on hand all the time. Another trick of mine, and I have shown this so many times before on my Instagram stories, be sure to follow me on Instagram, I share recipes all the time on there, is a bouillon base. This is beef, I ran out of chicken recently. I do like having chicken bouillon on hand as well. Mm. <laughs> How do I open this? I need baba. Oh, there we go. Whew, so strong. All you need to do is have water, a scoop of this stuff, and suddenly you've got a base for soups, gravies, whatever it is. You don't have to have broth, expensive canned broth on hand. It's a great way to make your own. So I always keep this in my fridge. This is one of those things that I always try to have at least one brick of plain cream cheese on hand. Did you know you can freeze this? So I do typically try to have at least one brick of cream cheese in the freezer as well, but this can be used for so many things. Of course, just on bagels or crackers or whatever, but you can also use it for creamy enchiladas, soups, slow cooker meals, frostings, baked goods. It's just one of those things that you can use for a lot of stuff. You gotta have butter on hand. We prefer using real salted butter instead of 
margarine or tubbed butter, it freezes incredibly well. So I do try to have a few sticks on hand in my fridge at all times. And then I also try to have a few sticks or at least a few boxes of butter in the freezer because it lasts a lot longer. But this, again, butter. Just, you put it on everything. A little trick of mine is I always like to have lime juice and lemon juice on hand. You can add it to salmon or marinades. It also helps to keep cut fruits fresh. Also, if I have ingredients to make a fresh salsa but I don't have any fresh limes on hand, this works just as well and it lasts a long time. So these, I always keep a little lime and a little lemon juice in my fridge. Jam or jelly, what do you call it? I do have some homemade that I am almost out of, but we use up a lot of jam in our house because we like to pre-make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for quick lunches. You can actually freeze peanut butter and jellies. I do have a video about that linked below. We always have jam on hand. Condiments of various shapes and sizes. Ketchup, mustard, mayo, Parmesan cheese. This is just key for so many Italian meals, Alfredo's, for Parmesan crusted chicken or salmon or shrimp. I find that this can be used in so many recipes. So this is one of those cheese items that I always like to keep in my fridge. I like to keep sliced cheese on hand, which is really good, not only for sandwiches, but also my baked Italian sandwiches. I will link that recipe below. They're so good and so easy. I like to keep brick or block cheese on hand because it's good for slicing. You can do cheese and crackers. You can make your own homemade Lunchables. You can shred it if you need it. But then I also do like to have shredded cheese on hand as well because for my kids, they are able to make their own nachos, their own quesadillas, their own bean and cheese burritos. And for them, they, I don't have to worry about them shredding their little fingers on the cheese shredder. So in our house, we eat a lot of cheese and we try to have it in all shapes and sizes. Keep in mind, every one of these cheeses can also be frozen. So you will also see this on my freezer must-haves list. Especially shredded cheese freezes extremely well and sliced cheese. So I always try to have a variety of these in the freezer as well. Meat. I try to have a little variety of meat in my fridge at all times, namely lunch meat, as well as some form of pepperoni or salami, or in this case, both. Why not? I find that it is so easy to do almost like a charcuterie board, charcuterie, charcuterie charcuterie, <laughs> charcuterie board dinner, where you go through your fridge and you pull out random pickles or leftover olives, little pieces of meat, cheese, whatever you have, and you almost make like a finger food dinner. These are really nice to have on hand for that. The kids love it. Also, we use these to make our own homemade Lunchables, which saves a lot of money for school lunches. And then of course, lunch meat is just one of those things that you can make baked sandwiches for dinner. You can make cold sandwiches for lunch. You can dice up the meat and make omelets for breakfast. You can make little egg muffin cups. The meat also is gonna end up on my freezer list because lunch meat especially, and small cut meats like salami and pepperoni, they freeze incredibly well. So this salami came in a duo pack from Costco. So I took one half, put it in the fridge for now, the other half in the freezer for later. This is my own little tip. I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I am a big believer in having real bacon bits on hand. You can tell we're almost done with this bag. I'm kind of feeling anxiety about it. <laughs> we use bacon bits for any recipe that calls for bacon that I don't wanna to go to my freezer, thaw out the bacon, fry it up, have my whole house smell like bacon for a week. Uh -uh. We just buy real bacon crumbles that the only ingredient is bacon. We then can use them on salads, in soups, in pastas, breakfast burritos, in whatever it is, but this makes having bacon on hand so much easier. So this is a must have for me. Bread, bagels, and tortillas. Technically, bread, bagels, and tortillas don't need to go in the fridge, but here in Utah, they don't last very long out on the counter before they start to go moldy. So I find that when I keep my bread, bagels, and tortillas in the fridge, that I can buy bigger bulk sizes and it keeps them fresh long enough that we can actually get through it before they go bad. You can also keep any bread products, bread, bagels, tortillas, even crackers in the freezer and bring them out and thaw them out as needed. So it will be in the fridge and freezer list as well. Sour cream is kind of in the same family for me as cream cheese in that my kids like it on burritos and Mexican food and breakfast burritos, of course, but also 
Sour cream is one of those texture and flavor enhancers that really you can make a million things with. Sour cream enchiladas, potato soup, you can even use it for desserts like bunt cakes and baked goods to make it extra moist. So we like to buy a big container of sour cream and use it for a million and one things, honestly. Fresh veggies. Obviously the fridge is a good place to keep vegetables so that you don't have to run to the store every single day for a nice side dish. Some of the things that I like to do is I actually like to buy big bags of baby carrots. They're not as healthy as full carrots, I do know that. These are really nice grab and go snacks for my kids. They also roast really well in the oven. So when I'm out of fresh, full-size carrots, I at least always, always, always have baby carrots on hand. And they last forever in the fridge. I don't know if we should be worried about that or not, but they literally last forever. So just any variety of vegetables so that of course, throughout the week, you can use them to make nice, healthy sides for your family. One thing to note is I learned recently that you should not keep tomatoes in the fridge. So this little guy is in the fridge, but shouldn't be. So I'm gonna pull him out, but I will put him on my uh, fridge list as part of the fresh veggies, but just know that that also includes fruits and veggies that should be out on your counter instead of in the fridge. Along with fresh veggies are of course fresh fruits, which I keep in a different drawer. Apples, oranges, mandarins, grapes. I try to keep a big variety of grab and go fruits on hand so that my kids will eat that instead of chips, though chips are delicious. All right, and I think last but not least, <laughs> this is a big commitment to move off from the fridge thing, but eggs. We always try to keep at least two dozen eggs in our fridge at all times because again, if you have nothing to eat for dinner or lunch or breakfast, as long as you have eggs, you always have something to eat. Hard boiled eggs make a fantastic egg salad sandwich. Scrambled eggs make amazing breakfast burritos or breakfast for dinner. You use them to bake, you use them to cook, you use them in casseroles, you can use them in meatloaf and meatball. Eggs are kind of the universal hero in our house, so we always, always try to keep quite a few eggs on hand. I think that's it. Moving on. Now onto the freezer, which I just pulled out a few things so that I don't thaw everything in my freezer. Again, I don't really have an order or rhyme or reason. I'm just gonna kind of show you some of the things that I always try to have on hand that help me make meals or snacks. The first thing being meat. It is so important to keep meat in your freezer. This is just chicken. These are pork chops. You can keep them in a Ziploc bag if you plan to use them quickly. I got a vacuum sealer for Christmas once. It was on sale at Costco. Amazon has them on sale sometimes too. And it vacuum seals your meat, which really will help them last six months or longer. So I always try to keep a bunch of meat on hand in my freezer, even pre-made meat that's easy to pull from like chicken nuggets, hot dogs, and things for the kids. So meat is a big one. My list of meat essentially is the stuff that we eat most often. Chicken, pork, ground beef. I usually like to have at least two roasts, a couple of steaks, bacon, and then some seafood such as shrimp and salmon or tilapia. If you have that in your freezer, the possibilities are endless. Just make sure you have some protein. Another thing I recommend keeping on hand in your freezer at all times are frozen veggies and some frozen fruit. The frozen fruit could even just be fruit that you had in your fridge or on your counter that's started going bad or getting soft, so you stuck it in your freezer. They are so nice for desserts, frozen drinks, smoothies. And then frozen veggies are so huge for a quick side. You don't always have to have fresh, raw veggies in order to feed your family a well-balanced meal. Just get some frozen veggies and you can steam them. You can throw them in a casserole or a soup. And then you always have healthy veggies on hand as a side without having to run to the store for fresh stuff. Fruits and veggies are a big one. Mama says so. Baking items. This is importante. I like having a variety of nuts like walnuts, pine nuts, almonds, baking chocolates, choc chocolate chips, even healthy items that you mix in baking like flax seed, chia seed, also yeast. I usually buy big containers of yeast from Costco because I like to make my own bread or pizza dough. If you have yeast on hand, there are a million things you can make from scratch, but sometimes I don't get through it quickly enough and the yeast goes bad. Did you know you can keep it in your freezer and it will stay fresh much longer? I just like to keep mine out and get it room temperature before I start baking with it, and otherwise it bakes great. Along with baking items, I actually recommend always having breadcrumbs of some kind on hand. For me, I like to keep my breadcrumbs in the freezer because they last a lot longer, but this could also end up on the pantry list. 
So pantry, freezer, either way, keep some breadcrumbs on hand because it's a really easy way to make meatballs, breaded chicken, chicken parmesan, lots of stuff. Dairy, you wanna make sure to have dairy in your freezer, which a lot of people don't. You can freeze gallons of milk or cartons of milk. I already mentioned that you can freeze cream cheese, which I like to have on hand for soups, casseroles, frostings, baked goods. But I also like to keep cottage cheese in the freezer. You wouldn't want to thaw it out and just eat it plain, but do you know that cottage cheese is great in casseroles, lasagnas, baked pastas, and if you take out frozen cottage cheese and you just kind of blend it up a little bit with a hand mixer or even a blender, it actually mimics the consistency of ricotta cheese. So you can actually substitute thawed cottage cheese for ricotta cheese in recipes and it's a lot cheaper. You're welcome. Butter, as mentioned earlier, I always try to keep lots of this on hand. And snacks. This is a big one that you might not think of, but a lot of times if you don't have something quick to grab for lunch, you're gonna run through the drive-thru or go get expensive takeout. So I like to keep frozen cheese sticks, laughing cow, string cheese, even sandwiches and cookies, things that I can grab and throw in my lunch or my kid's lunch, and it ends up thawing out by lunchtime. Candy. Chocolate specifically freezes so well. So if you buy some candy on sale, I like to keep it in the freezer so that I can enjoy it all year long. Especially these Cadbury eggs, my favorite. So there you go. Few little basics for the freezer. We've done the fridge, we've done the freezer, and now the moment I've been avoiding. Dun, 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 the pantry. We're just gonna ignore the big piles of junk in the back of the pantry. Hashtag I'm human. Okay. I guess we'll just kind of start at the beginning and I'll walk you through a few things that pop into my mind. Again, check the blog post below. I will add a lot more there as I think about it after I stop recording this. All right, a few things that I like to always keep on hand in my pantry are oil-based things. So peanut butter, Nutella, and powdered peanut butter. This is not a necessity. It's just kind of helpful for protein shakes, milkshakes. It's just a lower fat option. Nutella is just, life, <laughs> pulse, oxygen. We go through a lot of Nutella in our house, so we always keep this on hand. It's good for desserts, but it's really good to put on top of breakfast items like waffles, pancakes, crepes, zones, things like that. We do like to keep some store-bought syrup on hand, again, for quick breakfast. That being said, it is not a necessity because as long as you have butter, as long as you have milk, which I forgot to mention in my fridge section, but I have it listed on the blog post, but milk is a big one. And vinegar is actually a pantry item that I recommend always having because not only can you use it for cleaning and making sauces, dressings, stir fries, things like that, but if you add vinegar to a little bit of milk, you can actually make your own homemade buttermilk. And homemade buttermilk syrup is so easy. There are a lot of things you can make with just these few ingredients on hand. Pancake mix is something we always try to have on hand, especially if it's just in general, like a generic dry mix that you could also use to make biscuits, waffles, forms of breads, pancakes. So those are great to have on hand. We like to keep a variety of crackers, chips, and cereals on hand just because, well, I've got a million kids and we're American. We eat a lot of cereal. In the pantry, I always recommend having a variety of canned meats. It sounds gross, but especially canned chicken, make sure it's a good quality brand that's packed in water and really the only ingredient is chicken and water or tuna or clams or whatever it is. But this allows you to make really quick meals, soups, chicken salad sandwiches, even enchiladas without having to get into your freezer, thaw out the chicken, boil it, shred it, all of that. So canned meat is really important to have on hand. And I always recommend keeping a lot of baking items on hand. I'll actually show you a cabinet where I keep my flour and sugar and things, but I also recommend keeping sweetened condensed milk, evaporated milk, even some pectin for canning. Just a few things that with a few basic ingredients, you can make an entire cake or an entire dessert or an entire side dish with all items that are meant to be in the pantry. So baking, is huge for shelf cooking, huge. I do happen to have quite a few cake mixes on hand because they were on sale a while back and I had them, but I don't necessarily think that they are imperative because as long as you have flour, sugar, seasonings, you can really bake anything from scratch. So I'm gonna kind of ignore this and not necessarily call them a necessity, but a necessity I do think is imperative to have in your pantry is a variety of dried 
pastas. When they're on sale, stock up. And yes, they do go on sale, especially this American Beauty brand. These will get down to 50 cents a bag or less. Stock up for your life, sister. Pastas are such an affordable way to feed your family, especially if you've got teenagers, if you're entertaining, if you're hosting. Pasta stretches so well, and it is not a cheap meal in terms of quality. There are beautiful, fantastic gourmet pasta dishes that you can make for pennies on the dollar because then you're not serving someone a slab of chicken or a whole steak. You can cut up the protein and stretch it and fill it with beautiful vegetables and sauces and pasta. So I always keep a big variety of pastas on hand. Canned items, I believe, are really important to keep in your pantry. Probably one of the most important things because how easy is it to grab something from a can? Now, don't get me wrong because there are a lot of unhealthy ways to eat foods from a can, but there are a lot of ways to use canned foods to supplement an, a healthy homemade meal. So for example, there are veggies and fruits that come in a can. Try to get them that are packed in water instead of sugar. Try to get the ones that are no added salt. And not necessarily that you have to serve your family a can of vegetables as a side, but it's a great way to add extra vegetables to soups and other things without having to run to the store. Otherwise, maybe you wouldn't add them, but if you had them in a can and you have them on hand, you can throw them in and then you're getting more vegetables that way. I like to keep a variety of soups and soup bases on hand, including cream of mushroom soup, cream of chicken soup, which, you can make yourself, and that is healthier if you make yourself, but the point is to keep a variety of things on hand so that if you don't have time or you don't have the ingredients to make it yourself, you still have something in a can that when added to a protein and baked is an entire meal with ingredients that you don't need to run to the store for. Coconut milk or tomato sauce, tomato paste, things that you wouldn't necessarily eat by themselves, but that help you create an entire recipe or meal out of it. So make sure you have a good variety of these types of things. One thing that you will see rarely in my pantry are meals in a can. Like I almost never buy just canned soup or frozen full meals. I do have a few on hand in case of emergencies and also so that my kids can feed themselves if I'm gone or they need a quick snack after school. But for the most part, I like having bases or ingredients that can help you make a homemade version and actually it ends up being quite a bit cheaper than buying it pre-made. I recommend having a variety of canned tomatoes, tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, and beans. Beans are so so inexpensive, so I do recommend having dried beans on hand, black beans, pinto beans, all of the beans. They are pennies to serve a huge crowd, but you have to plan ahead because you have to soak them, you have to cook them, so it is nice to have some in a can ready to go for quick, like my pico salsa or with enchiladas or other things, so dried and canned beans, same with the tomatoes, canned as well as fresh. Continuing on with the pantry list, I'm really gonna focus on baking items and things that maybe you would keep in a cupboard. So rice, flour, sugar, powdered sugar, always, always, always keep that on hand because again, it's unlimited the amount of stuff you can make as long as you have those basic ingredients. Quinoa is something we like to have on hand at our house too, which is interchangeable with rice, but not necessary. That's just something that we like to have. Additionally, I recommend having honey on hand always. It's a, it's a nice natural sweetener. You can use it for a million things. A variety of oils. I like to have coconut oil, vegetable oil, and olive oil on hand at all times. Vanilla, vinegar, baking soda, baking powder, salt. I also like to keep corn starch, corn meal, and caro syrup on hand because those are used for a ton of recipes. I think that's it. Continuing on, cooking spray. I always have cooking spray on hand. I like to have balsamic vinegar. I love seasonings and I like to keep a variety of seasonings on hand because you can make anything taste good and homemade as long as you have good seasonings. That being said, if I had to choose 10 seasonings or less to have, this would be my all-star lineup. Salt and pepper being one, two of them, of course. And then the rest, I could probably make everything for the rest of my life out of taco seasoning, Italian seasoning, garlic, onion. And I usually actually prefer almost like the dried chopped onion versus onion powder. Um, that's just me though. A rosemary type seasoning, which for me, I actually love this Spice Island rosemary garlic blend. I almost never just use rosemary by itself, but you could do rosemary or rosemary garlic, a steak seasoning or meat rub of some kind, a bay leaf for soups, last but not least, parsley 
as a garnish and I put it on top of quite a few things. So if I could only survive with a certain amount of seasonings, these would be them. I do love having onion soup base and Italian dressing base because if you throw a protein in a slow cooker with a can of cream of chicken or cream of mushroom soup, with either this or the onion soup base, you've got yourself the easiest meal on the planet. So this is like a would like to have, but not a need to have. Let's take it for what it's worth. But again, that being said, I'm a, I'm a spice hoarder. I have a lot of spices, so. The more the merrier in my book. So there you go. That is a look inside my freezer, my fridge, and my pantry and cupboards. And the things that I like to keep on hand that I feel like allow me to create an entire meal based on ingredients that I have lying around. Hopefully that was inspiring and helped give you an insight as to how I cook for my family using things that I have on hand. What are your must-haves? I have no doubt that I missed quite a few, so share yours in the comments below so we can all learn from each other. And again, please be sure to check out that blog post below. I'll have so much more information and a lot of links leading to other helpful posts, as well as any ingredients that I didn't think of while filming this. Good luck with the rest of Shelf Timber. Remember to continue shelf cooking for tons more recipes and ideas and money-saving tips. Be sure to check out my budgeting program budgetbootcamp.com. We talk a ton about groceries, grocery shopping, grocery budgets, all those things. Use the code YouTube for 10% off. You're welcome. I have a pantry to go organize. I'm now realizing, so I'm gonna let's go. I'm gonna go work on that. Love you, bye. Bye. I literally don't know why these are all in here. Hashtag summer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it broke. It's all good. I like camping. Camping. Desserts. I already said that.